And if you don't remember long division, you can just watch what I do. Another thing, our polynomial didn't have any missing terms. We had a third power, second power, first power, zero power. But if you have a missing term, you want to fill in zero m squared or whatever term is missing so you don't skip over a power. <coughs> So I'd like to say I intentionally made a mistake. I realized I made a mistake and kept going. So you see what it looks like. Intentionally made a mistake. Yes. Okay. Well, I didn't intentionally made a mistake, make a mistake, but I, when I realized that, I decided to keep going instead. <laughs> Which is what adults do when they realize they make a mistake. Hopefully don't want to All right. So here's how it feels if you make a mistake on your division. You end up with not zero as your remainder. So. If you don't end up with zero, chance already made a mistake. The other possibility, if you didn't make any mistake here on this division, you either wrote that down wrong, like that's not a factor, or you made a mistake writing a pot. Somewhere there's a mistake. Uh, so if this division works out, you should get remainder zero. There could be a few reasons it doesn't, but this is what not a zero remainder looks like. So let's unmake that. I think that should be a two. And now we got plus 2, 2m minus 2, subtract 0. All right, that's how your division should go. So we just factored our cubic into a uh, quadratic times a linear, or a second degree times a first degree. Hopefully, what comes to Worse, you can complete the square or go quadratic formula if they're not going to factor in a nice way. Now, before I promised they were real and distinct, so they shouldn't be complex. They may be integers if we're lucky. Let's hope they're integers and see if we can <coughs> do some guess and check fact. It's always the most fun. Also, we need a two and a one. And every bit of All right, so there's our complete factoring. When you go to quadratic, you can always factor it without doing anything other than quadratic formula or complete the square. So you should always be able to factor it. quadratic. <coughs> All right, so we got one equals negative two and equals negative one. So three factors that are all, or three uh, m values that are all distinct. So how do we write our answer? We just sum it up with, let's see, we supposed, so we're basically using that form, and we're just going to plug in the three different m values and then add them together. Mx, and somewhere before we wrote down So we have three, three solutions. So y equals e to the x is one of them. y equals e to the negative 2x. And the third one, e to the negative x. All I did was fill in m values for uh, where m is. That's all. So are these linearly independent solutions? That's a little tricky. We proved that if your, 
coefficient of x is not the same, then they're linearly independent. So we did that a little while ago. You're all looking like you don't believe me. Totally reasonable. So we showed those two were linearly independent when p is not q. Yes, we did. So we got three different, uh, three of these different forms, and none of the uh, coefficients are the same. So we got three linearly independent solutions. Moreover, somewhere around here, boom, boom, boom. the linear combination of linearly independent solutions is a general solution. So our general solution is basically add a linear combination of these three together. So we're going to take the three that we just got, add them together, and you can add them <coughs> with any coefficient in front of them. So this is called the general solution, which we used yc for this. So constant plus constant plus constant 3 e to the negative x. So this is a linear combination of those three solutions. So any questions on putting this together? Could you recap real quick? I've got those three solutions. So these, so they all come from this, that form is super important and they're just the m values you plug into there. So we got three distinct solutions, three linearly independent solutions. So we make a general solution by uh, creating a linear combination of the three solutions. So here. Yeah, so it's like that the m values are filled in, and I can add any constant multiple of, of these together. Uh, if this was a linear algebra class, I'd probably be writing something like C2, V2, C3, V3, and those would be vectors. And that would be our, the only difference is those are now functions instead of vectors. So I don't think doing another one of these will be very insightful. So what we're going to do instead is go for the next type, which is repeated real roots. So we just had different or distinct real roots, and now we'll go repeated and see how that looks. And this is labeled 20C. So the difference is they'll still be real, but they'll be repeated this time. So let's suppose m equals 2 appears twice. Or we could say as order 2. Then we would normally get yc, yc(x) was c1 e x x. Now, just looking at this, what algebra could I do? Well said. Back to the same thing, e to the x in both of these. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, why do I need two constants? I really just have, you're just adding two constants together. So this is really one solution. And this is not really two independent solutions.
So solve this one where a is a constant. So this has constant coefficients and it is a second degree. So the most uh, m values we'll get is two. So go ahead and figure out what m values you get. And you always start out on this type. y equals e to the mx. I need to get y prime and y double prime. So go ahead and get those. Plug it in. This is a little bit tricky because you have an a, but it shouldn't be too tricky. You only have second derivatives. So it's going to be a quadratic. So who's got the factoring skills? Should be m minus a squared. There was a little hint that we were going to have repeated roots as well. So you could sort of expect that there'll be something squared. So that is 0, m equals a repeated twice. So we saw if I just go naively ycx equals c1 e to the as c2e to the ax, that's really just one solution. That's not really two independent solutions. All I did was replace m by a. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this second coefficient right here, and we're going to change it a little bit. So I want to know what can I place in front of this uh, second, instead of a constant, obviously a constant's not going to work, but what function can I put in front of this and it still remains a solution? So we're going to change this. So forget about c2e to the ax. Let's go fxe to the ax. And we're going to plug this back in and see what type of function can we have. And still, it still works as a solution. So I'll rewrite the original here. It was y double prime oh, plus minus 2ay prime. E negative ax. Uh, what's that? E negative ax. E. So we still have the same like second part of the function, but we're changing, we're widening what our cove, we're really not putting any restrictions on our coefficient. Before, we assumed it had to be constant. So now we're loosening that restriction and say, hey, just put something in front of it. And the only, th the only restriction is a function of x, not a function of y or y and x. So that's the only condition we're putting on it. It's not a function of y. What do I need to do to compute y prime? What rule do I need? Product rule. So I don't know f prime other than I'll just write f prime of x. So I don't know anything about f. 
but go ahead and use product rule and just write derivative as f prime. You can take derivative of the other one we did already. You're just going to have product rule, and then your second derivative will still have a product rule inside as well. So we'll use the factored, actually, everything will have an e to the ax. So we'll use the factored versions, and then we'll factor e to the ax out all the way when we plug in. I'm not going to write the of x of x of x. That's just getting ridiculous. Algebra questions or problems or mistakes that you noticed? We're supposed to arrive at the conclusion that f double prime of x has to equal zero, meaning that that only works when that term disappears. Oh, we should simplify stuff. Cancel, cancel. Ooh, are we missing an, no? We're missing, 
Yeah, so I think the error happened up here. I didn't. Yeah, I never included my fx e to the ax for my regular y in there. Let's see. So this right here should be fx. Which means this is a squared f. All right, a squared f plus a squared f take away two a squared f's. Yeah. So those are all going to cancel out. Those are gone. E, A, X. Now I can write of x. It's very reasonable. All right, we know e to the x is not 0 ever for any x value. So the other one has to be 0. So those two added to be two, canceling the the minus right there. Oh, okay. Let me go. I'll just use a different color. It'll probably make it way more clear. So those positive ones canceled the negative one. Whatever domain we're working in, this needs to be zero for every x in that domain. So what type of functions can you think of whose second derivative is zero for all x values? I think, x I think we have to go, yeah, one lower. But a lot of functions that we think of, derivatives don't disappear. All, almost all the rational functions, all the trig functions. But polynomials, their derivative I don't want to say the word gets smaller, but you drop a degree. You get less x's each time. So if we have a linear, in this case, <coughs> when fx equals, oh, don't use the letter a. We used that already. Um, we didn't use b. Oh, let's go mx plus b, old school. No, we used m already. Kx <laughs> plus b. <laughs> uh, f prime is k, and f double prime is 0. So there we go. That's the type of function who has a derivative that disappears, a second derivative who disappears. So if it's repeated twice, you can use a linear function as your coefficient. Use a degree one, one polynomial. And if it's repeated once, which is probably not worth saying the word repeated, but you could think this analogy works if it's only appearing one time, you're using a degree zero polynomial. What does a degree zero polynomial look like? Constant, constant which is what we used already. And so technically, this works for constants as well with degrees, uh, as thinking about them as a degree zero polynomial. So if we had something repeated three times? Repeated thrice, thrice. then it would be a quadratic in front, yeah. And four times, you just go whatever t number is repeated, one less than that is your coefficient. Uh, so these are undetermined coefficients, so I'm going to use c's here, like c1 and c2 for this. So let's not go with those, even though there's a reasonable choice. We'll go c1 plus c0. So a derivative will be c1, a second derivative will be 0. So the way we'll write our final, oh no, did I already use those co uh, subscripts also? Man. So we use c1 and c2 already. Let's go for 3 and 4. And right now, we should be able to tell why bring, using Greek letters is reasonable. You run out letters real quickly. So, 
So put all this together, we're getting our solution. I think we went with y1 e to the ax. That was our first somewhere up here. C1 e to the ax, not y1, c1 plus So we just substituted in a function f of x, and now I'm just going to write what f is, which is c3x plus c4. <coughs> so we have some redundancy here. What is redundant? Well, I got e to the x everywhere, but there are two of these terms that I can combine together. So the first and the last, because they are both constants times the same function. So we'll just combine the constants together. So we look at this. Another way to think about it, I don't really need that first term there. I will account for it already. So I don't really need that one right here. So let's get rid of it, get rid of it right here. And we see that our final answer is just our f of x e to the ax. We don't really need the original there. So in this case, we can just write it as c3x plus c c4. I can probably change my subscripts if I wanted to, but we've already set these up. So you get a constant and a linear term. And we start out with degree 2, so it makes sense that we have two undetermined uh, constants. And of course, repeated, if, if there was repeated, uh, an repeated real root that appeared n times, get c1 plus c2x plus c3x squared plus you don't want to go all the way to x to the n you want to stop one short so we got to stop at x to the n minus 1 because n derivatives needs to completely take this out and this will be c n yes n e to the ax So this will be, so we're going to solve this y to the fourth, oh, y, fourth, fourth derivative of y minus 3 times the second derivative of y plus 2y prime. So same first step, let y equal e to the ax, or mx. and figure out the values of m. So there should be four, this is degree four, there should be four solutions. There's a really good chance they'll be repeated. They should all be real, because I haven't talked about complex ones. So expect at least uh, to be repeated. One of those solutions show up twice, if not three times or four times. So go ahead, take four derivatives, although at this point you can probably just take those in your head and plug it right in. They're not. The pattern is pretty obvious. And go try to go as far as you can, even all the way to the actual solution.
questions. Is it way better on a like regular computer, laptop, or? I think so. Typically, I haven't tried it on a laptop. I tried it on the phone. Is it like that on? on you have an Android phone, right? Yeah. Is it is it similar? Yeah, it's all buggy on my phone. Um, I think I used it once on my laptop. I think it worked fine. I think the reason is the what you're looking at. There's like a bunch of different elements, and because I can change it and it updates, it's not like it renders it somewhere and then posts it up. Like there's all these pieces that could change at any time. There was one day that I wasn't able to make it to class and I was able to follow along because it refreshes constantly. So that oh, that's kind of cool. Like <laughs> behind lectures. So. <laughs> well, plus you got the textbook open. It's we have textbooks. <laughs> Now you can see what you're made of from pre-calculus. The M is easy to factor out. <laughs> so rational zero theorem. And hopefully I was nice and chose a nice real root. Not a more challenging one to find. So 1 is a solution, which means m minus 1 is a factor. And when you do your division here, there is a missing term. There's no m squared inside that polynomial. So in your long division, you get m cubed plus no or plus 0 m squared minus 3m plus 2. So once you're through with this division, you'll be in quadratic land. And you should be able to factor after that. Yeah, there's definitely a mistake somewhere. With the adding it m to the negative 3m, wouldn't that give you negative 2x? 
too bad. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. So now we get negative two and everything should work out. So any algebra factoring division questions? So differential equations could be a nice trip down memory lane at the end of your college career, end of your math career. Get to see all the cool stuff you tried to forget about. <laughs> all right, so we do have, we have repeat. It's repeated twice, but we got two non-repeats. You treat the non-repeats the way you did before. So your so this says order two, which means we're going to use a degree one polynomial coefficient. So it's always one less than the order you see. So if I write them separately, the first one, E, ah. let's write the first M as M minus zero, just so it's painfully obvious that zero is the M value there. I was about to write E to the MX, but that's not very useful. M is zero, not M. Well, M is always M, but you know what I mean. E to the zero X. Oh, there's a constant in front. Don't forget. So we'll go C1, E to the 0, X, the next. Oh, we didn't write constants in this form. Yeah, we just wrote them like that. Next Y is E to the negative 2, X. Yeah, negative 2 is our next solution. And then positive 1 is our last solution. So we're going to put our polynomial here. And we have E to the just 1, X. So we know our polynomial is going to be that degree one polynomial. So we combine into our general y c of x will be c1. Now e to the 0 x, what is that? One. one. So our first term is just c1, or c1 times 1. So if your m is 0, it means you got a constant plus c2, e to the minus 2x, plus, now I'm going to fill in the polynomial because I know my constants right now. So I'm going to use c3x plus c4 in this case. So I'm just going in order. That's why I didn't fill it in here because I wanted all my constants to be lined up nicely at the end because I have a little bit of OCD. So I want everything to work out. So I said, ah, it's p of x, and I'll put in the actual coefficients at the end. And that is our combination of uh, all possible solutions of this form. And so we're just picking in a line function there. Just that C3x plus C4. Well, I mean, that, that function in particular is, is linear. Right. And so we just chose we, that one to use? Or how, how did you choose the PS, PX function again? It, so it needed to be a degree one polynomial. So that's why we that. And I mean, I could have gone capital A, capital B, but then it would have looked different than I should have gone capital C, capital D if I was going that route. Okay. So the only reason I, I waited until the end to write that in is literally so it would look like C1, C2, C3, C4. Sure. There was no other reason than I wanted my answer to look pretty. Okay. That's the only reason I waited until the end. Otherwise, I could have gone, you know, right here, I could have done C1, 
x plus c2, but then my c's would have not been in the right order. Doesn't matter really how you order it. Uh, I like to, if I'm having four constants, I like them to be written out c1, c2, c3, c4, like that. I guess another way I could have written this guy first with c1, c2, and then had the other two appear later. That would be another way to accomplish my goal of having the order look really nice. So that is repeated real roots. So what is next? So yes and yes. So we got to go. Uh, we'll go complex roots, and then I think oh, I don't even have repeated complex roots. If it's complex, it has a real part. All right, so your characteristic equation. So one thing to keep in mind with complex roots, you don't actually see the complex uh, values until you try to solve your polynomial. Your polynomial won't have complex coefficients. Your polynomial will be real number coefficients. Your complex numbers come in when you talk about the solution to that polynomial. So your polynomial is going to look nice. It will look something like, I don't know what an is, but an m to the n. So here all of the uh, AKs will be real numbers. So all your coefficients are real. So you won't see complex numbers in your characteristic equation. So let's suppose that we're using M. Suppose M equals A plus BI is a solution. So if you know that this is a solution, there's another solution you automatically get because you started with real number coefficients. So if you have one complex solution to a polynomial with real coefficients, what other solution do you get? Then the, which one? Yeah, the conjugate solution. So if, that's only true if your coefficients are real. If your coefficients are not real, that theorem doesn't work. But if you got real number coefficients, so also m bar, which is a minus bi, is a solution. And it's called the conjugate Paris theorem. All right, so let's write out what we would normally get. We would get y equals e to the mx, which in this case will be e to the a minus, or plus bi, and our other solution, e to the m bar x, which is e to the a minus bi. So these are our two solutions right here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right, that's just the m part. Yep. Times x. And we need to parentheses because x times that whole, this whole thing. So, of course, this leads to c1 e plus bix plus c2 e a minus bix. So let's do as much algebra as we can. I'm going to take e to the a plus bi and write it as e to the a times e to the bi. So I'm going to use that sum to um, multiply the base. And 
And unfortunately, we have to leave it here, but we'll do some more algebra, and this will get back to some of the weird stuff we were doing that it wasn't obvious why we were doing it before with imaginary numbers.